All right, I'm good. Okay, I just hit record. What is going on? <laughs> I hit the mic. Yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, ow. There's your cold open right there. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knights of Horror. Today, we're bringing back an old series that I, I've i always wanted to continue doing. I just, now that I have more people in the group, it, it's a lot easier to do now because you don't have to focus on both characters. You can just, I guess, have one person do one character and one person do the other character. This is going to be a, a show me and Rob do uh, every now and then. This is Horror Icon Mashup. We take two of the greatest uh horror icons in, in horror cinema and we see who would win in a fight now obviously we've only gotten a few of these crossovers in the past and that was of course with freddy versus jason uh which really set this whole thing in stone and i think from that movie and i and i don't know about you rob but i think from that movie on i've wanted to see more of those yeah uh same here i i i feel like um also freddy and jason i think did it really well um i kind of enjoyed i also think in in, in that kind of lane is alien uh versus predator yep. um maybe it could have been that one could have been done a little bit better but for the most part like these villain on villain icons uh freddie and jason was awesome and uh i thought yeah it'd, it'd be cool to see these you know these other villain uh icons kill each other but you know i think also I, not kill each other because we need them yeah <laughs> as, as a most recent uh well at least in the last couple years they did the ring versus the grudge um, Japan did that film, which I think that was another matchup a lot of people wanted to see because those are two demonic entities um, going head to head with each other. And I've only seen so many clips on that, and I think I've only seen the main fight, which is on YouTube, because um, I wanted to see who would win. Honestly, that's a that was an in, that was a matchup that I think would interest me a lot. Um, you have the ring, obviously, with this possessed uh, videotape, and you know the Grudge, which is just this entity that runs this house like a demonic force. So. What do you think would win in that fight? Uh, the Grudge in the Ring. Um, here's the thing. Probably, I would say the Grudge would probably win because That's a two on one the thing. Ring. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is is the Ring? Um, you got seven days, and you know before it actually killed you. So the Grudge would kill the Ring in in that seven days. Right. So. So that that's just my opinion. Good good little mashup. But like I said, in the past we've seen some pretty iconic matchups and we want to keep that tradition going. We're fans of horror and we want to see these iconic mashups. And we got at least 11 episodes of mashups we can do uh, coming soon to you guys. Uh, but I can announce right now the next mashup we're going to be doing. Uh, one that I had to see who this guy can go up against because this guy is an interesting person. Uh, but the the person I put him up against in the next episode is a equally as interesting person, and that is going to be Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise versus Terrifier from the film Terrifier the Clown. I don't even know if that's his name. I gotta I gotta do more research on that. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he's the clown from Terrifier. He's a, I think he's got a name, but I don't know. I'll, I'll do more research on that. But that is going to be our next matchup. So if you guys are open to that. Um, go ahead and vote on our social media. We, we put up stories on our Instagram of who you think would win in the fight. And ultimately, the fans are going to decide who wins this fight. Me and Rob are just going to go back and forth and uh, defend one of the two and give all yeah. arguments as to why we would think they would win the fight. But ultimately, you guys are going to get to choose. And at the end, uh, at the beginning of every episode that we come uh, in fruition with, we are going to review those results. Uh, so I put up a poll on Twitter and I put up a poll on Instagram um, the, who you thought would win in the fight, and we will put up the results of those poll in the next episode with Leatherface versus uh, the clown from Terrifier. But let's get on to our episode for today, which is um, Ghostface from Scream versus Jigsaw from Saw. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start, obviously, with Ghostface. Uh, so obviously, if you guys know the the lore of the you know the Scream franchise, there's been multiple killers throughout the the run of the, the scream franchise obviously they're working on the fifth film as we as we speak right now so that's in production and we don't know who the new killer will be and we don't even know where this movie uh, if it's going to be if it's getting like a new nightmare treatment like how uh nightmare or nightmare on elm street did when west craven came back to direct um 
the new Nightmare treatment kind of brought the lore of Freddy Krueger into the real life lives of the actors who played in the Nightmare Before or Nightmare Before. Why do I keep saying Nightmare Before Christmas? A nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street. Because um, it's Christmas time. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Jack Skeleton is in your nightmares now. Um, no, but <laughs> they they brought they brought like the real life like a real life entity of Freddy Krueger out into the real world of the actors who played in the Nightmare on Elm Street films, which I thought was a really cool approach to that film. Uh, and especially to bring it back, Wes Craven obviously is no longer with us, but uh, I, I feel the fifth installment of the Scream franchise is in good hands, which because a lot of like screenwriters, a lot of the people who work close with Wes are coming back to do this film. And a lot of the original cast is actually coming back, at least the original three that we know of, of course, with um, David Arquette, uh, Courtney Cox, and I. The who's the lady that plays uh, Sydney Prescott? Well, she's coming back. Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Yep. Who is was my crush uh, growing up. <laughs> Nev Campbell, they're all returning in their iconic roles of the screen. I don't think it would be a screen movie without them. That's just me. Oh, yeah, no. You, like, you cannot have, at least at the very least, Dewey and Nev Campbell. Like, you cannot have them. Yeah. You have to have them in a screen film. You just have to. Um, so I'm going to go down of the list of all the killers that I pretty much did my research on, including the TV series and the video games. Now, I'm going off the Season 3 TV series when they brought it back um, because that one was a more – I don't know if it was connected or if it was its own thing. or I'm just going to say it was more true to the films than what MTV put on. Uh, they went for two seasons on MTV with the Scream franchise, kind of rebranded the whole character and kind of did their own thing. But when they brought it back, um, I think uh, – I want to say uh, – who brought it back? A BET, I think, did a season of it, um, of the Scream, like it's, I think it's called like Scream Resurrection or something like that. And they brought back like the original costume and everything, which was really cool. But here's a list of the killers. So from the first, from the first movie, we got Billy Loomis and Stu uh, Matcher, which was played obviously. Stu Matcher played by uh, what's his name too? I always I'm bad with names today. Um. Oh wait. Uh, Billy and Stu. Um. Billy was that. Okay, so I know it's Screet. I know it, it's like. Uh, Screech Ulrich or whatever his name is, and then um, ah, what's the other guy's name? Gonna hate me, and that's Kim from Kim and Cat Stay Alive. I think both of them, they know his name. <laughs> yeah, I just I know he was in he like was the other shaggy. guy was in. That's thir- all I know. That's where I. He was in a uh, Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, that's where I remember him from. As well, but yeah, obviously these two were the were the killers in the in the first film, and then we got Mickey, who was played by uh, fuck, I forgot his name too. Uh, O O Flant O O Plant. What was his name? O- oh, Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, he was playing. He played the killer in the second movie. Uh, Roman Bridger, who actually played the killer in Scream Three, who was revealed to be uh, Sydney's half brother. Um, Jill Roberts and Charlie Walker were the killers in um, Scream Four, which was played by Emma Roberts and one of the McCulkin brothers. Um, and then we had Beth and Jamal J. Elliott, uh, who I don't know the actors who played them, but they were the on-screen. Um, killers for um, the Scream TV show. And, of course, this one was made up just for the game because they only had the rights to use the character's look. They could not use the uh, overall um, rights for, like, the films and stuff. This is Danny Johnson, who actually was the killer for Dead by Daylight. So I'm even I'm even including video games up in here. So, oh, wow. Um, these are all the, the people who've played um, the legendary Ghostface killer. Um so here is my argument of why I think uh, – here's the way I've always looked at it, in my opinion. Let's just say all these killers were still alive. Uh, for okay. some reason, they never got killed, and they all got sent to prison for life. Um, and let's just say that for some reason, they all got, they all got released. Um, and Jigsaw sees this, <laughs> sees what they've done, and invites them – not really invites them, but kidnaps them all to be part of – a saw game. Now, I always saw it maybe as Billy Loomis probably being like the actual person who decides each one of the f- people's fates. Um, okay. Billy Loomis wakes up obviously in a room. He he gets told by Jigsaw like you know y- you've done horrendous crimes and you need to be punished for what you've done. But you're not the only you're not the only person who's done these crimes. So as he wakes up, you know he's got to go through his obstacle to make sure he doesn't die. And from there. Each room he goes in, he sees a victim who has played Ghostface, and he has to decide their fate. Does he die or does he die? So ultimately, Billy Loomis is playing the games of Jigsaw, and each trap, each game that's set up for Billy is a different Jigsaw killer, uh, or a different Ghostface killer, I'm sorry. 
Um, ultimately, what would happen was Billy would come, and this is just a fan film that I how I would see the two crossing over. But ultimately, Billy would win. It is ultimately revealed that uh, John Kramer has picked up a new pro- uh, protege, and that is Nev Campbell. Wow. And she is the one controlling the jigsaw games. She's learned how to build the traps. She's learned uh, everything she can from John Kramer. John Kramer has actually felt sorry for her because of all the shit she's had to go through in all these films. And the movie ends with Billy Loomis being locked into a room, Sydney closing the door, yelling, game over, screen goes black. That's how I see this film <laughs> portraying, and that's how you can cross the two over. That's a lot of actually, that's a, I can't take credit for that. I saw a lot of fans in a forum actually say that, and I kept thinking in my head, like, that would be the ultimate Saw movie if they ever crossed over with Scream. Well, that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's, I'm going to say that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I would, I would definitely, uh, I definitely go to a midnight showing of this movie. But I think we have um, to make like a Knights of Horror kind of thing where we'd all get yeah, together, you know what I mean? Because this yeah. is like the ultimate crossover. And ever. we would all need to dress up either as Jigsaw or Ghostface. So half and half, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. Yeah. So. I'm okay with that. Well, uh, Mr. Anthony, you um you laid out some some good stuff there. I'm not even and done that's, yet. That's just that was just a setup oh, of, geez, of, you're, you're, of my you're, characters and how I would play out a saw needs to go okay. this movie. Well this is this is what I thought of. When we were when we were talking about this, we were texting each other. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to just go with uh, John Kramer as Jigsaw because this is why. Now, let me tell you why. Um, not even going to get into, you know, uh, his, 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 as far as his thought process of what he does and why he does it. I'm just going to go right now as far as him being a super intellectual person. Right. Um, who, who almost in a sense and, uh, not saying this they're on the same level but almost in a sense is he prepares and plans as a batman would where he thinks i'm not even gonna say one or two steps ahead of what the person he's targeting is i'm saying he's thinking one two three four five steps ahead and this is proven throughout the movies um he's always got a backup plan for the backup plan for the backup plan because he's his intellect, I feel, is just um, it, it's it's there, especially in the movies. It's there, but they don't really delve into how smart this man is. You know, he's an engineer, um, and and I believe in. I think the first movie they show that you know he's recognized by um, one of the papers that you know how how brilliant he is as far as you know his engineering skills are. So he has you know, and that that only lends itself to creating more intricate traps and mazes and devices to teach people their lessons um he he uh and it, i don't want to sound i don't want to sound off off the deep end with this but he does this stuff in a in a way to try and teach people uh lessons about their life and appreciation and Though he does it in a completely opposite way that I would do it, um, his his mindset is not evil intent or intent to physically hurt. Even in the in the movies, he says he doesn't want to kill anyone. He wants to teach people lessons and appreciation. So that's why I think um, Jigsaw uh, John Kramer is just. He's in he's an upper level uh, villain. I wouldn't even call him a villain. He's he's a he's a vigilante in in, in my opinion. Uh that's why I just have him at a whole other level. Just a, just a smidgen above uh, other movie villains. Right. I mean, yeah, when you look at John Kramer, he's not he's not a bad guy. Uh no. something happened in his life where he thought it was unfair. So he wants to make sure he teaches people the meaning of appreciation of life and to not take anything for granted. Uh, and right. I think a lot of people always skip that when they when they look at these films is that John Kramer is not the bad guy. If you really look into – they, they go in explanation as to what each people have done in each movie. Um, right. A lot of these people did some fucked up and bad things that – 
they deserve to get what the, what's coming to them. And uh, John Kramer, he he really isn't the bad guy. He's just serving justice for what he thinks needs to be served justice. Like a lot of today's law system will just look past a, a simple murder right. or something. And John Kramer feels, no, that's not how it should work. This is this is how it should. You should want to live. You should want to do the things out of the extraordinary to want to live your life and appreciate life. So I'm going to put your put your ability to the test. But here's why I think Ghostface has an advantage on John Kramer. John Kramer, yes, is essentially a, a good guy. And you know what? Out of all the people I'm going to choose to actually do this uh, uh, adaptation of who I feel can be the Ghostface to take it on, I'm going to choose the Dead by Daylight version. Danny Johnson and I've played as both characters in Dead by Daylight. I've played as Amanda's uh, pig face costume, the Saw uh, villain that you see throughout the Saw franchise. So I've played as Amanda. That's actually my go-to killer. I love playing okay. as, okay. as the, uh, the 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 Jigsaw killer, um, the Reverse Bear Trap, amazing, um, all that stuff. But Danny Johnson in in Dead by Daylight is deadly, um, and the reason why I chose Danny Johnson now, and this goes for all the screen. Um, all the screen villains. Uh, Jigsaw tends to hide behind his traps a lot. He focuses on getting a perfect game in store. Uh, but he, you were right. He is always five steps ahead. He does this planning of the traps way before he chooses his victims because he wants to make sure his traps are going to work and they're going to do what they're built to do. And then he goes out victim hunting, and then he puts those traps to the test. Um, and they're always successful. Um, so he knows exactly what he's doing. But... You gotta imagine these two have two different fighting styles. Well, Jigsaw is not a hands-on type of killer where he just lets his traps right, do all the right. work and he kind of hides behind the uh, the behind the scenes and watches this whole game unfold. Ghostface is a straight up in-your-face type of killer who will, who will sneak up on you and just get the job done, and he doesn't care uh, at all. Uh, he will slit your throat. He will do whatever it takes to kill you. Um, so that's one. That's one thing I looked about when I when I wanted to see this battle is their fighting styles. Obviously, Jigsaw never gets hands on with his, but he always has people do his work for him. Whereas right. Scream or Ghostface um, has always been a stalker, but he is face to face, and just about ninety nine point nine percent of the time, he kills the victims. He really does, and I think the only three exceptions are the three heroes of the films. Obviously, right. but every time that you see him go for a kill, he gets the job done. Um, but some can argue Jigsaw can be on that level of the 99.9% and that he could be that 0.01% of people who wouldn't get killed. But the way I looked at Danny Johnson going in to kill Jigsaw, he could sneak in. He could sneak in on Jigsaw late at night, follow him, stalk him because Ghostface is another stalker as well. He 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 really does study his victims before he kills them. Gets as much information on them as possible. Even goes to the extent of killing other people's family members or anything in a relationship just to fuck with your mind. Or he can kill him while he's busy making traps. Um, all very very valid points. I will not argue with that. Um, yes, Ghostface um is very hands on and. Typically, it is someone. Uh, Ghostface is someone that can throw hands and is physical and in your face, and which is why um, you know this is very difficult for me because I Ghostface is probably my favorite, you know, kind of horror icon. Um, but here's the thing: yes, Jigsaw has people who kind of help him do his. I'm not gonna say dirty work, but just his vigilante work. Um, and in saying that, I feel like no matter, and this, you know, I'm just kind of, this is far reach here. One thing I will say about the ghost face and the people who have, um, you know, donned the ghost face mask, um, they were, they were influenced and, and, you know, they could be swayed, uh, you know, whether it was one, you know, we looked throughout the movies and. And everyone who's you know put on the mask, you know, to a certain extent, I'm not saying they could be mind controlled, but they can be nudged in one way or the other. Whether if it was you know if there was two killers, one of them seemed a little more 
um, like they you could be influenced. Uh, and goes back to Mr. Kramer's intellect is he was able to manipulate people with his mind and get them to do and see his side of what he was trying to do for others. So even if two people came for for uh, Mr. Kramer, I believe with his intellect, he would be able to sway or at least put a little bit a little bit of doubt into their minds as to why he needs to be. And in that distraction, he lays a trap because let's remember, uh, Jigsaw is always five steps ahead. So he knew, even though they were watching him and stalking him, he knew that they were stalking him because he's that smart. And he had set traps for them for when they came. Because I believe in one of the movies, I'm not, I think it's the first or second one. I want to say it's the first one. Uh, no, it might be the second one. Um, he, he, wait, which one's, uh, now I'm getting confused. Uh, okay. Um, in, I believe it's, I believe it, the one with, uh, uh, is it Donald Glover? Danny Glover, Danny Glover. Um, Jigsaw gets cornered and he, he gets, he gets trapped, but he finds a way out because he's that smart and he's prepared. So I, as much as, as much as the scream, the ghost face, would have been stalking uh jigsaw at the same time i feel like jigsaw would have known that he was being watched and and even if he didn't know someone specific was watching him he would have been prepared for a surprise attack or some kind of surprise you know someone trying to look for him because he knows that like though i'm watching these people i need to be prepared because of his mind and his intelligence he's always being prepared now there's a reason why i chose Danny Johnson out of every person who's played okay. Okay. the Ghostface character. And that's because Danny Johnson is a reporter by day, killer by night. Ooh. So he purposely does the kill so he can report him during the day and has news. He is literally doing it for his own sake. He has no one tempting him, no one doing anything to persuade him to do this. He is simply just doing it so he can have a news story the next day. Okay. Um, okay. Danny Johnson is pretty ruthless in Dead by Daylight. Obviously, a lot of the killers in Dead by Daylight are ruthless. Um, but I, I feel like the thing with Ghostface is uh, he likes to taunt and play with his victims prior to killing them. He yes. gives them a phone call. He gives them, you know, he he, he makes them do these horror movie quizzes, uh, and he really starts to manipulate and get inside the the victim's mind before right. he kills them. Uh, and once that is said and done and it's time for go time, he just pops out of nowhere and ends up killing his victim. Uh, John Kramer, however, you know, he has his victim drugged. Uh, he moves them to another location, then gives them a chance to survive while he watches from another location as they live or they die. Um, so there's die. a chance that a lot of Kramer's victims, which is near impossible usually, uh, except I think one saw movie they did show like a recovery group of all the people who got to play the games of jigsaw and you saw them how messed up they looked but there is at least majority of the time his victims die but a lot there's a percentage of them out there there's a high percentage of them out there that actually survived the games of jigsaw whereas with ghostface his kill rate um like i said just about 99.9 .9 of his victims die whereas in the other point one and it's like probably it's three people mostly. Yeah, it's always survive. the same three people. The same three people, you know, survive. And that's just because they've been doing this game for so long that they know how to really get into the mind of the killer and everything. But uh, let's just say this. I'll leave it at this for my final argument. Ghostface has numbers, uh, bizarrely good stealth, and endurance, which okay. is a big, um, big thing for this as well. And if Kramer, uh, Kramer is a genius. I'll give him that. But Ghostface blends in literally in the middle of everybody and is not discovered to who he is until the very end of the film, which is kind of something. And that goes for every screen movie because we've seen the killer in person. And of course, there's some there's some movies where you can suspect it right off the bat. But there's some mm -hmm. movies that do a very good job of hiding who this killer is until the very end of the film. 
So that's going to be my final argument of why I think Ghostface would ultimately win, and specifically Danny Johnson, because Danny Johnson just does not give a shit. He just wants a good story at the end of the day. Okay. So he'll do okay. anything to get that story. Respectable. I respect your argument. You make a really good, uh, valid argument. It's very strong. And, uh, um, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, so what the 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 Ghostface you chose? What was his name again? Danny Johnson. Danny Johnson. And what does Danny Johnson do? He is a reporter by day with an alias name as well. So he's not Danny Johnson during his reporting days. He actually goes under another alias name. Okay. And and by night, what does he do? He's the Ghostface killer. Okay. So right there, he's already on Mr. Kramer's list, and so uh, he wouldn't even know that he was about to get abducted. So, sorry, but uh, Mr. Uh, is Danny Johnson would have been uh, targeted a long time ago by Ghostface, and he would not know that Ghostface was coming for him because Mr. I mean, uh, not Ghostface, uh, uh, Jigsaw was coming for him. So, because Mr. Kramer is just that good. He knows what's going on. He would have put two and two and two together and been like, why is this reporter always seem to be where these crimes are happening, I'm going to investigate. And boom. boom. And that's why boom. Jigsaw wins. Jigsaw wins, obviously, <laughs> with you, okay? But it's not up to us. It's up to you, the fans. You're who right. Do you it is not up to us. Who do you think would win in a fight between uh, Danny Johnson's ghost face or any of the ghost face killers of that matter, yeah. whoever you want to choose who would win, or Jigsaw, John Kramer himself from the Saw fr franchise, um, leave your comments down below or vote in our polls. Obviously, we're going to be re releasing the results of that um, next uh, next episode of Horror Icon Mashup, which is going to feature the clown from Terrifier versus Leatherface. Who do you got in that fight? Who? Uh, I I mean I gotta I gotta I like Leatherface. I think I got I gotta go with Leatherface. I was hoping you would because I like a challenge, so I get to choose <laughs> the clown from Terrifier. All um, right. And I, I got very little research to do. As for you, you got a lot of research to do. Yes, I do, because Leatherface is, uh, goes got a back lot of, He's years. a household name. He's got a lot of films. I got yeah. one film and a sequel coming on its way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start uh, watching all my, movie, my only Leatherface movies again. Yeah, so tune in next time. Don't know when the next episode will be up. Um, maybe we'll start releasing these probably at the end of every month, and you get an episode of Timelines at the beginning of the month. So every, at, the, at the end of every month, that gives us enough time to do research, get valid arguments going. And we'll bring another episode of Horror Icon Mashup to you. But go ahead and uh, we'll release the results of who you thought won in the Jigsaw versus Ghostface fight. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. Also, go ahead and vote now. We're going to be putting up the Leatherface versus the Clown from Terrifier uh, thing right after this video. should be on our Instagram and Twitter. Um, if not, uh, leave a DM or a comment and we'll add you into the voting pool. But vote who do you think would win in a fight. Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or The Clown from Terrifier. We'll see you guys next time for another episode of Horror Icon Mashup.